a stepless steel shaft or a graphite shaft may have these exact same features, but they're not going to be well defined. Usually parallel tip measurements are part of the specifications on a shaft, whereas parallel butt section is not. The latter is what controls grip sizing, with some shafts like the Aldola NV or DVS uh, actually not possessing a parallel butt section at all. Taper tip shafts will only apply to those heads that have taper tip hosels. See, the component industry only works with parallel tip constructions, so only in repair or retrofitting will you ever worry about taper tip shafts. But to shed some light, taper tip shafts come in various lengths. Each length is designed for a different head. The tip to first step dimension on each club is proportionally shorter, almost if it were pre-trimmed by the manufacturer. And this helps to save um, one additional step in the assembly process, which is tip trimming. Now the negative aspect, the club maker has to uh, carry a greater amount of inventory. Thus taper tip shafts are they're geared more for mass produced OEM clubs. Now where do you trim the shaft from? Well, let's look and wait for the uh, screen to pass here. Okay, there it is. Um, let's look at the top diagram first. In a unitized or master shaft, you're only going to be using so much of the shaft. The shorter the club, the less of the shaft you're going to be using. Oftentimes, an iron shaft is designed either for a 1, 2, or even a 3 iron, uh, now that that's the lowest loft iron found today. Whatever iron it was designed um, for or, or from, starts with no tip trimming, and everything comes off the butt end. And for each club afterwards, a proportional amount comes off of the tip end to compensate for the heavier heads, as iron heads typically increase in 7 gram increments from one to the next. In trimming half-inch increments, which is quite common in parallel tip steel shafts, the butt diameter is going to remain uh, constant, ensuring that the grip sizing is going to be the same throughout the set using the same shaft. Now this is only possible by the long parallel butt section to allow the, or parallel tip section, to allow the shaft to still be inserted in the hosel after being cut shorter. Now the bottom diagram represents graphite shafts. You might see that the parallel tip section is much shorter than the steel. Therefore, you can't be as aggressive at tip trimming the shaft and still expect the shaft to fit inside the, the hosel of the head. Therefore, many graphite shafts may be trimmed in mm, quarter-inch increments instead. Now, trimming in quarter-inch increments, or even butt trim only, we're going to be taking progressively uh, more from the butt end on each and every shorter club. In certain cases, you may actually feel the grip size to become smaller. We said before that tip trimming controls the flex. In looking at the anatomy of the shaft, you could see that the tip is smaller in cross-section than the butt end. By trimming from the tip end, you're removing the most flexible portion or section of the shaft, which will make it stiffer than if you were to remove an equal portion from the butt end. Therefore, tip trimming is what controls the flex to offset the additional head weight, and butt trimming is usually devoted more to the length rather than the flex. As we said before, these concepts and procedures are logical once you learn how to use the shaft trimming charts. But where do you find them? Okay. There's usually two places to find this information. One is the shaft manufacturer's website. And secondly, component companies will either place this information in their catalog, website, or send out um, on a piece of paper uh, with each order. Now, the charts and nomenclatures may be different from the manufacturers or component distributors, but the results should still be the same. Now, Hariko doesn't believe in sending out a piece of paper with each order. This helps preserve our trees and cuts down on greenhouse gases. Rather, we have the trimming instructions in three different areas. You can find one located on the inside back cover of your 2010 catalog, whether it's the print or the uh, PDF version that you can download. Also, under our uh, support tab on the Hariko website, you can find under Golf Resources, 
a link to the shaft trimming instructions. This is also in a PDF format. And the nice thing about that file is it's bookmarked, so you can easily sort through the different manufacturers and find it fast. And we also have, under the left-hand navigation panel on the Hariko homepage, under Resources, a link to trimming instructions. And this is an interactive trimming guide that you can sort the shafts by the model number or the product name. So we encourage you to use uh, these uh, helpful tools. Now, for the print and the PDF catalogs, you need to first locate the shaft you'll be trimming in the shaft section. Let's say we want to trim a Graffoli Pro Launch Blue 65 wood shaft. Well, we go to that page in the catalog, and then you look at the far right-hand side in the specification box. From there, you're going to see a header that says Trim Chart. The information may say G, which indicates which trim chart to use, or it may say G, followed by the number 1. The number after the trim chart, um, or yeah, the trim chart letter indicates the trim notes. This is where you want to place Simon Says. Remember, only do what is stated for each shaft. Now the next thing we want to do is locate the trim chart in the back of the catalog. So what we do is we find the row on the left where it says G. And then, let's say we want to trim for a 5 wood. We locate that column at the top and where the row and the column meet. This tells us how much to tip trim. And in this case, it tells us to tip trim 1 inch. It's that simple. Now, one important note is to look at the uh, club head numbers and the row just underneath that for the approximate head weight. And why is this important? We'll realize that shaft manufacturers make raw, uncut shafts for club ma manufacturers to use in their products. And club manufacturers are free to determine or establish their own standards. Uh, they may have a uh, different he uh, standard head weight and length they produce their clubs. And no bigger example can be found than in the hybrid category, where there's more variation in recommended lengths and head weights which are directly related to how you trim the shaft. So I want you to pay close attention uh, to that as often component manufacturers will publish their head weights. And as a club maker, you can always weigh the 